Hello, in this tutorial we will check out the new asset browser for V-Ray. We will explore the general workflow, find out how we can add our own materials to it. And then lastly, I will show you how you can customize the material editor to use your own custom preview swatches. So in this tutorial, we're going to check out one new addition to V-Ray 5, which is the V-Ray asset browser that you can reach to by clicking on this button up here in the toolbar. Then when you do that, it opens your own dedicated window for the asset browser itself. So at the moment, this asset browser only supports shaders. I'm not really sure if in the future it will also support other stuff like textures, HDRIs, models, and so on. But for the time being, now it only supports shaders. And you can see it already comes pre-populated with a bunch of different materials and they just come with your V-Ray installation. So in this tutorial, we're gonna check out how we can use this asset browser, and then more importantly, how we can add our own materials here to the asset browser itself. So all of those ones here are the materials that came together with V-Ray. And then I have this own category here for demonstration where I added some of my own materials. That's from a previous tutorial. You wanna check that out, you can find it in my channel. So I added those also in this asset browser library in here. We're gonna check out how this works. And then we're also gonna check how we can create these custom thumbnails here. You can either use exactly the same thumbnails like in here, but what I did was to generate these kind of own custom thumbnails with a model that I think looks a little bit better than just like a standard sphere. So you can see more how the shader is reacting and we're gonna learn how we can generate these kind of thumbnails. Additionally, we will check out how we can change these kind of preview swatches here in our material editor. So that works for both the compact and the slate material editor that we don't need to use like this kind of sphere in here with this very simplified lighting setup, but we can use something a little bit more complicated. For example, something like this, where you can load your own custom model in here with a little bit of an HDI environment. So you can get some much nicer representation of your shader directly in the material editor itself. Now let's check out what are the basic functions here of this asset browser and it's actually quite simple at the moment. We can either just click and drag the material and assign it here to the object that we want to select it to. So that's one option. The other option is to pre-select the object and then right click in here and say apply to selected object. And the third option is to just choose like one swatch here in the material editor, then right click add to scene and then it will be just added to the selected swatch in here and then you can apply it to all the different models that you have in your scene. So those are all the options that you have to apply the material here from the asset browser to the models in your scene. And now we're just gonna check out this handy button in here, use triplanar mapping. So you can see at the moment, if we go inside the shader in here, we can see it uses a V-Ray bitmap and then it has this mapping source, but this one just has a UV W randomizer node inside here. There's no triplanar node attached to it. But if we choose this one here, use triplanar mapping, and then we add it to our scene again. You can see the swatch will update. And now it uses a triplanar mapping. If we apply this one in here, then it instead of uses the UVs from the model itself, it just hooks this V-Ray triplanar texture node inside here. And then we can define the scaling here in the size parameter to just find the scaling that we think looks good. There's some other buttons that I think is pretty self-explaining. I think you should be able to figure out by yourself what they mean. Now let's go to the more important stuff, like how we can add our own materials here to the library. So for this, we need to download a script that we can find here in the Chaos Group forum. So if you're not registered there, you should definitely do that because I think it's a great resource. And then in here, there's V-Ray for 3ds Max general category. There's a sticky topic here all the way at the top, V-Ray material library sample refresher script click on this one, and then you will be able to download the script that you need in order to transfer your materials to the V-Ray asset browser. So what's important to note that this script is still in development, so there might still be some bugs. And later on, it's probably also will be integrated into the V-Ray asset browser itself, then you wouldn't need to run this external script. But for the time being, I think this is a great workaround that you can use to transfer your materials quite easily to the V-Ray asset browser. So now in here, the material editor, we have these four different kind of materials and I want to add them now here to our asset browser. So how do we do that? We first have to check what we actually downloaded. So this one here is the file that we download just now. It comes with this max script and then also this max file in here. Now we just need to know where to put these things in order to make the script run correctly. So in your program files, Chaos Group V-Ray, you have the different installation for V-Ray for different versions. So I'm using 3ds Max 2021 in here. So let's go inside here and then check out this asset folder in here. 
At the moment, you can only see this material preview V-Ray scene in here, but that's exactly where we have to copy this file in here. So we're just gonna copy the Swatch 2016 Max file, and then we're just gonna paste it in here. It will ask for some permissions to do that. So let's do that. And then the file is in the correct folder. The easiest way to add exactly these four materials to the asset browser is to first create like a 3ds Max material library. So you just go in here and choose a new material library. We can call it, for example, my test materials, save it. Then it creates this new material library in here. And then we only need to move all of those shaders in here until they are all in our material library. And then you can see the star here. That means the material library is not saved yet. So we just right click and then press here and save. So now we can just close this window and also the material editor. And then the only thing that we need to do is to drag and drop the max script that we just downloaded into our viewpoint in here. And then we just choose the material library that we just created. It was this one in here. Then there's a bunch of different options, but I think for the most part, you don't really need to fiddle with them. You can only choose like different render resolution, different render quality if you want to speed up the stuff. But let's just keep everything by default and just press this button and see what happens. So now let's speed up the video, but you can see the four materials are now being rendered. And now you can see that there's this my test materials category here with those four materials exactly inside that we can use for all our future projects. So now there would be the question how we could remove those files here again if we don't want them anymore. And that's actually quite easily done. So inside your user documents, there is a folder called V-Ray Material Library. That's where the material library is installed by default. And inside here, you can find a very simple folder structure. So outside here, there's always these .mat files. These contain the shaders. And then inside those folders with the same name, they contain the preview picture. So here's our, for example, my test materials.mat file, and then the preview pictures that belong to it are stored in this folder. And if we wanna get rid of them in our library, we just delete those two files here, restart 3ds Max, and then everything would be the same way like before. So now as promised, let's explore a little bit how we can create like these kind of nicer looking thumbnails in here. And for this, let's go through a theory for that. So if you open here this max file that you downloaded, this swatch2016.max, that's the file that's being used in order to generate these kind of previews. So let's see how it looks like if we start a test rendering. And now we can see that this picture right here actually looks exactly the same like those previous watches in here as well. So this scene is also being used somewhat to generate these kind of preview pictures in here, but it's actually not exactly this scene that's being used, but a scene that I will show you in a second. So in the folder where we copied the max file from before, we can also find this V-Ray scene file here, material preview, and this file is responsible to generate these kind of preview pictures that we see here in our material editor. So the plan is now to modify this max file here so that we can create our custom file so that we can use this here for the material previews and then also for our asset browser preview pictures that we always render out. So now you can see I modified this file here a little bit. I exchanged the model. I changed the lighting and so on, but I did all of this without changing the inner structure of the scene. So basically everything uses the same naming, everything is linked into the same hierarchy, everything uses the same kind of materials. So that's quite important because otherwise the script uh, would be messed up and otherwise also here your materials watches wouldn't really know which part would need to be changed when you do some settings in here and which one doesn't need to be changed. So, so that's quite important to not destroy the inner structure. You should just follow it exactly the same way like it was already set up in the scene. You just exchange the stuff that you want to exchange. And what I did in here, for example, was I added a little bit of uh, HDRI environment in here so that we don't have this very generic and very plain and simple lighting setup. And I also added some texture here for the lights so that everything looks a little bit more realistic than what I did before. And then once you're done, just be sure that you just reapply the original material in here that was assigned also in here previously. And then the scene is now ready to export. So then for the export here for these material swatches, I think we can disable this turbo smooth in here so that we keep the file size pretty small. Also what's important, for example, is that all the resources that you're using are very small resolution 
because anyway, you would only see it here in these kind of small material swatches in here. So this HDI, for example, has like a really tiny resolution, so it doesn't really cost a lot of memory. And yeah, that's quite important to just keep everything quite optimized. So now we open 3ds Max and you can see now we have these kind of nicer swatches in here, which have some more realistic reflections than the default spheres in here. So let's make it black, for example, we can see if we make it big, we can see the reflections in here quite good. And um, yeah, we can make it a little bit glossy, for example, and uh, add refraction and so on. And you can see they're all update quite nicely and yeah, look, in my opinion, much more realistic and much more nice than the default ones. And if you want even better quality inside here, you can go to this option and then enable anti-aliasing. I hope it's visible through the YouTube compression. And then you can see once that's updated that now everything is even anti-aliased and looks really quite nice and quite high quality. If you want to find these files, you can find this over on my Patreon, then you can use exactly the same one that I was using. And then let's just try out some of the materials in here. So for example, this car paint in here. And uh, yeah, I think this looks quite nice or like this carbon in here. So I think overall it just looks much nicer than these kind of very generic spheres. And I think it's much more realistic, especially for these kind of glass type materials. You can better understand like uh, how much fog color you need to enable in here in order to make the glass tint correctly. For example, in here, I could just choose like a much lower fog multiplier. And then you will see that basically you only have this greenish part in the thicker elements and the elements which are more thin, they don't have this greenish tint and so on. So overall, just much more realistic and much more easy to evaluate your shader basically. Yeah, and now the only question is how can we export like these nice previews here for our asset browser? Yeah, so for this, we just run the script again because we exchanged the original max file in this folder. Now we are using the one that we custom built. So we just pick our material library from before and then we just process those files. Yeah, now we can see in this folder here, we have those updated previews, which now look much nicer. Yeah, and that's basically the end of this tutorial. So I hope you like it. And if you have any questions, you can let me know. I will do my best to answer them. And yeah, subscribe to this channel to see more of this kind of content and see you in the next one. Take care and see you soon. Bye-bye.